within the European Union, um, we know that there is a new trend coming up. It's about the, uh, about the reform of the uh, European Union. With the election of the French President Emmanuel Macron uh, earlier this year, and most probably a re-election of Angela Merkel in Germany in September for the position of Chancellor, we will see a new impulse for reforming uh, the continent, not only around Euro, uh, European Union, but also or predominantly around Eurozone. Countries of Eurozone will matter much more in decision making in the, in the European Union. And it's not only about the money, it's also about the other spheres of influence uh, of the members uh, that, that uh, belong to this group. And here, uh, the important um, countries that belong already to Eurozone are Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, uh, and uh, Slovakia. But unfortunately, not Poland or Hungary, uh, which at the same time started to, uh, you could say, rebel uh, against the mainstream of the of on the continent on in, in, in Europe and uh, they are having a lot of uh, political fights uh, with the other partners in the uh, in the in the European Union. Emmanuel Macron visited Eastern Europe uh, late August and um, he criticized Poland and Hungary and he also mentioned that Poland is isolated. Um, he got a reply from Beata Schidler, who responded that uh, French president lacks experience and he'd better o occupy with his own affairs. Do you think that this isolation of Poland and Hungary is something we could really talk about now? Mm, that is not uh, completely true. Emmanuel Macron definitely mm, made an overstatement of, of the... Uh, of, of, and he mm, evoked, I think deliberately, a uh, diplomatic crisis with Poland. Uh, he indeed uh, criticized Poland in, a, in the most open way so far. We, we didn't see that before. On the issues that are important to the whole community, European Union. He basically backed the position of the European Commission from Brussels. And uh, also um, Angela Merkel followed in, in his uh, um, opinion that Poland is not cooperative and not willing to um, apply the standards of the European Union at the moment. It's partly about the whole Poland, the whole country, but it's mostly about the government. The government of Poland is being criticized by other partners in the European Union on various issues. And that comes vice versa. Poland and Hungary also criticize the, the other governments, which um, is within natural limits of a political debate in, uh, in Europe, but it brings a lot of tension and uncertainty. Uh, there is a growing fear that eventually this will lead to a smaller part of involvement of Poland or Hungary in the main decision-making bodies within Europe. You spoke about government. Um, what is, according to you, public opinion, public reaction, reaction to these uh, critics, uh, which come frequently from Brussels, from Paris or from Berlin? Uh, can you say that they kind of, kind of uh, anti-European attitudes in Poland now, among young people? Among Surprisingly, no. 80, more than 80% of Polish population uh, are very happy about um, membership in the European Union and people want to stay members of the European Union. So the government in Poland doesn't have an easy um, uh, uh, task if it wanted to move away from the, from the core of Europe because the population really supports the, the project. Um, the government therefore says that they criticize other particular governments and uh, they at the same time claim that they are pro-European. So that's uh, a bit of a double standard uh, of, uh, of, uh, on the side of, uh, of Polish government right now and unfortunately it is not very effective. Uh, 
what we see is that Polish population, uh, public opinion, but also people sometimes come to the streets, uh, are very much in favor of all the standards that are set within the European Union. N that means the, in the long run, we can be rather optimistic about the, the, the future of, of how we will proceed. You the uh, people coming to the streets and the opposition. Uh, what, are according to, what is, according to you, the potential of this uh, opposition of these people who are not happy with the government? What could change maybe in, in several months, in one year? Well, first of all, that put, puts pressure on the politicians. Uh, demonstrators criticize not only the government, but also the opposition parties. They, are, they don't like the, the official politics that much. And that creates opportunities for newcomers, for new power centers. Within Poland, this is, for instance, the president of Poland that um, for the first time he openly uh, attacked the government of the party he comes from. So he vetoed uh, the two, uh, two laws that were proposed by the government and by the parliament. That creates an interesting dynamics. We will only see in a couple months if he uses this opportunity and creates a, a new political um, direction. And I think that's uh, similar in many other countries. In Hungary, for instance, uh, the, there were also lots of uh, civic protest, civic movement on the street and uh, there were some public uh, activities including a referendum against uh, organizing Olympics. That referendum didn't even took place but the, the organizers of this referendum um, that uh, Viktor Orban, Prime Minister of Hungary, saw as a danger, the, they were so successful that the Prime Minister cancelled the proposition to have the Olympic Games. And they organized a new party and then now they are trying to, to, to run for the government. So I think a lot of dynam internal dynamism is, is taking place uh, within the system, within, within the major revolution, but uh, political actors are uh, emerging and in a few years we might see new, new leadership in these countries. You sound optimistic, but at the same time, there are still some people, maybe a lot of people, supporting Orban and supporting uh, Polish ru ruling party. There might be a demand for such a conservative turn in Poland as, uh, as well as in Hungary. How can we explain that such parties came to power? Well, these parties uh, are by no means conservative. They are uh, revolutionary. They even claim that they want revolution, change of the system. But uh, it's not really so much power of attraction, but like every, every government, they also have the power to incite fear. And they uh, make people fearful of the migrants, of the potential uh, terrorist attacks that we know about. Um, and because of the international st instability, they get a, a popularity bonus, like any government uh, which shows the strong hand would get. Mm, so the, the current popularity of those parties is not so much about um, the positive proposals. They do have some policies that uh, are uh, implemented, but it's mostly about uh, uniting the population behind them. Uh, that is a little bit fearful of, of the others, of some potential threats. And the, the, so the international environment um, helps the right wing to uh, be uh, a little stronger than the, the open society people.